Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Everybody is uh, closing out a very good and productive week. Uh, it has been definitely a busy and challenging week uh, for me and those here with Rick Wallace Enterprises, which includes the Odyssey Project. Um, but it is what we push for and what we have planned for and what we fight for. It's progression and it comes with challenge. It comes with so much. And so I don't do it from a place of complaining, uh, but it has definitely been a challenging week. As you saw in the introduction, we are still pushing to raise funds for the work we do. Uh, the reason that I'm here before you now is I need to iterate to you the significance of being invested in the future of our race beyond superficial debates and discussions and getting lost in symbolism and so many other things that seems to be the course of our movement and how we tend to operate. We have a problem because we don't understand how things work. We have a problem because we are easily triggered and easily manipulated. We have a problem because we remain consistently at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder. And we buy into the idea that we have arrived, that we somehow have overcome when the truth of the matter is, statistically speaking, we're not uh, as good as in good of shape uh, of shape as we were uh, in the 50s and 60s, early 60s. Um, home ownership is still at 41 percent. There's been no gain there. Uh, the wealth racial wealth gap is widening. Mass incarceration is still full blown, uh, and it's directly connected to primarily uh, the alienation of our young black males. Uh, in the academic process because we know that there's a direct link between drop out, dropping out of high school and not completing high school and becoming incarcerated. The rate increases drastically uh, for those who do not finish school. We understand that uh, our children um, are even at graduating reading at best on an eighth grade level. Uh, there's problems that come out of all of these different situations. There is an ongoing issue with intimate partner violence and intimate partner homicide. There is a constant push within the collective uh, that's driving a wedge between our men and our women. And we don't see the connectivity or the push or the agenda of an external force that's pushing all of these things. And, you know, the th here's the thing. I've conducted almost 80,000 hours of academic scientific research into the plight of foundational blacks, African-Americans, uh, American descendants of slave, whatever you decide to call it. Uh, but those of us who descended from slaves in this country and 
it's important to have that understanding because without understanding the origin, without understanding the source, you cannot possibly create a solution. Solutions never arise from addressing symptoms. Symptoms are simply addressing symptoms is simply a way of dressing up what's wrong and pretending that it does not exist while it festers underneath the dressing. Uh, that's what's happening is we're driving more Benzes than ever. We are wearing some of the highest fashions than ever, but the racial wealth gap is widening. We uh, boast of our intellectual advancements and, and prowess, and we are exceptional uh, intellectuals, but we are constantly missing the opportunity to advance ourselves for ourselves by ourselves. And we are constantly looking for validation, acceptance, and approval externally um, as if we need that in order to be what we are. And as long as we are doing that, we are losing. The work that we do at the Odyssey Project is necessary. Why? Because they have thousands of think tanks. They conduct thousands of studies and uh, research uh, programs yearly to understand how we're impacted by XYZ, how we respond to XYZ, where are uh, our children uh, emotionally, psychologically, academically. I've done a great deal of research in epigenetics, which includes adverse childhood experiences and how it's impacting young black children and the increase in suicide among young black girls, five to 13, the increase in suicide in young black males, uh, age 14 to 24. And I can go on. There's a 30, 30% increase in, um, suicide, uh, in the black community across the board, regardless of age and gender, we have a problem. And we're not going to address it by screaming, oh, my God, we're not going to address it by saying we're upset, we're outraged, we're frustrated. Those things are simply the reality or the consequence of confronting a reality that we aren't satisfied or happy with. It isn't until we invest in the understanding we need the understanding but then after we gain the understanding the understanding is often used as a means of being another explorer of our community there are a bunch of people that are uh eating real good doing tours i, I don't want to do tours i don't want to do lecture series i want to implement programs that work our children need us to be active sitting behind a podium or standing on the stage to me if necessary if if, if i can see that it does something uh to empower people within the community yeah i'm for it i'm not saying that it's absolutely wrong what i'm saying is there has to be more than that it has to be more than intellectuals uh, uh, flexing their intellectual uh, uh, power and prowess uh, in front of others who will, will clap and celebrate and lift them up. Um, but nothing's being done to change the status or the state of the things that are impacting us that they speak so uh, deeply and eloquently about. Uh, I'm about change. When I did the research into African-American adolescent and young adult male violence, my, my goal wasn't simply to know why it was to come up with a solution. I came up with the fact that one of the most powerful and influential forces to mitigate violence in young African-American adolescent and young adult males is socialization. Proper racial socialization drastically reduces the propensity to commit acts of violence against one another and definitely against our females. But I also found in that that proper socialization also improves their chance of success in life. It improves their chance of developing a skill set that will allow them to earn a living wage and be able to support a family. It would increase their desire to become 
uh, the head of families, the leader of a family, to, be, to get married, to have children, and to support and love that family, and so much more. It, it increases their uh, chance of becoming a business owner. And so I created Black Men Lead uh, as a rite of passage. Uh, it has been my push to have it become a nat national universal uh, rite of passage where we are defining manhood on a universal level so there's no misunderstanding or variation in what we're expecting from our men. That means that no matter where I'm at in this country, I can expect a certain standard to be pursued and met based off of what we have defined to be black manhood, black masculinity. There's a push to uh, marginalize black men. There's a push to minimize the spiritual force of black women. There is a push to drive a wedge of dissension and hatred and vitriol between black men and black women. And while we do have issues, while we have uh, enough of Thing, enough things that we need to deal with. What we cannot allow is others to trigger us and put us in places that have us operating um, in a way that's detrimental to what we say we desire. If we're saying we are in uh, pursuit of or we desire liberation and empowerment, then we must understand the dynamics of empowerment. We must understand that we must raise up a generation of children who don't suffer from an identity crisis, who aren't looking for social media and Instagram to define them. We are going to have to spend time planting the seeds of awareness and historical impacts, planting the seeds of awareness and uh, understanding of who they are despite what they're seeing and hearing in a white in a white racial caste system we have a responsibility to be more vested in the future of our race than we are we have a responsibility to sit up and say we're going to get behind the programs and I've said this uh, on multitudinous occasions that it is immensely important to understand how we are being exploited and raped in the way of resources. Those who do give tend to want to give to the big names, the things that are getting the press, the things that are uh, flowing. And the problem with that is the nonprofit industrial complex has not served us. The big names, the big movements, the hashtags have not served us. They have uh, uh, grifted and they have snatched and grabbed the movement in Ferguson, usurped by Black Lives Matter, who we are now seeing has the last thing they have uh, at the point of their interest is the life of the heterosexual black male. But they hit and built their movement and their momentum off of the life of Mike Brown. Now, yes, the hashtag existed before that, but the organization built its movement backed and funded by George Soros. And it took millions out of the black community, out of Ferguson, that could have been used to back people and support people like Darren Seals, uh, Neyota Ura and many others who were literally foot, feet on the ground, boots on the ground, putting in the work, standing, and willing to go the distance. Darren ended up dead fighting for what he believed in. The Yoda has spent a bunch of her time under, secure, under the protection of security in seclusion while still working and still sharing, sharing a word. And I know this because she's a close friend. I, I saw this from the inside through the eyes of people who were actually there. So I know how it's done. Now everybody's asking about the close to 90 million that's unaccounted for in Black Lives Matter while the leaders are buying million dollar properties in high value property areas and states. And nobody can talk about who in the black community benefited from that cash grab? Nobody. 
Anytime you see a bunch of money being pulled, it's not for the sake of the black community. It's for the sake of the people pulling the money and moving it. The money is flowing through hands. Everybody's eating, but nobody's winning in the black community. It looks good. It's a great photo op. It says, look at what we're doing in the black community. We're pumping millions into this program. We're pumping millions into that program. But the programs aren't working. Well, they know the programs don't work. Like I said, they've got thousands of um, researches and studies going to know what it takes to make something happen. All you got to do is move a couple of elements, remove certain elements, and it looks good. It sounds good. It even may be play out on paper, but it doesn't work because you remove important elements and linchpins within the dynamic of a program that makes sure it doesn't work. The goal isn't for it to work. The goal is to give the image of it working so that here's and here's the detrimental, the duality in the detriment to that. Number one is the money isn't going to those who are actually putting in the work to make a difference. Number two, when you're pumping that much money seemingly into a community and you're not getting the desired results and the reports are coming back that things are actually getting worse, it gives the image that we are incorrigible, that we're unhelpable, that there's nothing that can be done to fix the dilemma within the black community. We are simply doomed to be of a lesser status, to be... Um, criminal minded and poverty stricken and that there will be some of us that will rise from the ashes, but the vast majority are simply who they are. And that's far as far from the truth as you can get. We've been socially engineered to be at the bottom rung of a money grab scheme, a power scheme, a wealth scheme. And it's important that we stay there and, and all efforts and energy is invested in ensuring that we are constantly distracted, that we are constantly misled and misguided, that any time that we do get the idea that we're going to act, our energy and effort is misdirected towards something that doesn't work. Further frustrating us because, man, we did, we gave, we got fired up for Ferguson. And for a minute, it looks like things were going to change, but nobody is paying attention to the switcheroo. Nobody's paying attention that the people who were actually grassroots boots on the ground got shoved out of the way by Black Lives Matter, by Sean King, uh, and, and, and the likes of when the real people who put their lives on the line, at least six of them ended up dead suspiciously. Darren shot multiple times and set on fire in his car because he started calling it out as he saw it live. And there even t one time where they're calling for him to be killed and dragged down the street. Why? Because he was calling them out for who they were. My thing is until we get to a point to where we are supporting one another, where we are giving to the things that matter and let's see the thing is with me is i've been doing this for over 30 years um i have been boots on the ground almost eighty thousands of academic hours uh programs uh like music is life black men lead uh the black empower black community empowerment initiative uh where we've gone in homes and taught community connectivity uh uh community purchasing, uh, where you use your community power to get reduced rates. I've, we've done all of that. We continue to do that. Um, there is a need for a more uh, robust think tank. Our think tank is connected to some pretty good minds. But we need more minds. We need more people who understand different areas and components of life from business to finance to education uh, to politics. And we need to have think tanks of how we're going to move strategically to engage the enigmatic issues that we face as a people and outside of the vein of emotion. Your emotions have a place. It tells you 
what your reality is and how you feel about it. it. It is never meant to be a catalyst for action or movement. You don't behave or move or operate off of action. One of the things that we have a problem with with a lot of our men is that it's not a problem having an emotion. It becomes a problem when your emotion becomes the determining factor in how you respond to the things that you're dealing with. We need to be able to sit back and say strategically, this is what's going on. Something else that we need as a black community or protocol. Protocols are things that says when this happens, these are the things that follow. In other words, we don't have to think it out. It's already planned. It's a protocol. When people, when police come into the community and shoot an unarmed black man or woman, these are the protocols. These are the actions we are taking. We don't need to sit up and talk about it. We don't need to rally. It's simply what's going to happen. When something happens in, in politics that we don't like, when, when, when we're not getting the results in education that we don't like, when, 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 when we're looking at an increase in mental health um, issues and mental illness and, and 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 these are the protocols we need protocols we need a code of conduct we need to have a designated code of conduct that de defines how we're behaving first and foremost with one another that needs to be a greater demand on young black men to develop skills that they can operate and use to build businesses and that means skills with their hands auto mechanics uh plumbing electricians carpenters um, we need designers, uh, we need architects, we need people who are willing to commit to building something. And this can't be, well, once we get this or once this happens, or we need our reparations. Uh, I'm all for reparations. Uh, but what I don't want us to do is sit around waiting on reparations as the perfect response to our needs. Uh, things start to happen for you when you start to act on your needs, even when it seems you're at a disadvantage. In other words, you have to be willing to take action. You have to be willing to get into it. When I'm asking you to support the work, I'm saying do, there's not a day that goes by that there isn't someone brought to me that's going through something in the black community. And they're simply a microcosm of a much bigger issue. Uh, I'm c constantly being brought young black males who are struggling with suicidal ideation, other forms of mental psychosis. Um, uh, I'm being brought women with children who are on the verge of homelessness and so much more. Uh, people who are facing charges for things they didn't do. <coughs> And we're fighting a battle. We're defending what we value. I value the, my black brothers and sisters no matter where they're at in their journey. I, I value them. I value their potential. And I understand not everybody's going to get it. Not everybody's going to get it at the same time. But I know that I can't judge people based on them not being where I'm at in my thought. Because I haven't always been here. I am simply operating in the culmination of a journey that has brought me from one place to another and has exposed me to a bunch. And I'm trying to share it with the world, not just in doing videos and lectures and writing books and all the things that I have done, but in providing solutions to the problems uh, based on what I've discovered, what I've uncovered. We still need to be doing way more research than we're doing. I've done research in uh, the uh, transmission of multi-generational trauma, complex trauma, uh, adverse childhood experiences, uh, exposing epigenetics as an influence, not only in trauma, but in long-term <clears throat> negative health outcomes, including breast cancer, uh, including stomach cancer and other forms of cancer, uh, lupus, and uh, a number of other diseases, uh, including type 2 diabetes. Uh, these things uh, perpetuate based on environmental stressors and, and increase based on environmental stressors. I have literally been asked to speak twice at the International Conference for Epigenetics and Cancer. I never went into epigenetics trying to figure out how it impacted cancer. I went into it to figure out how it impacted trauma 
and discovered that there was a back end to it and that we are suffering from it major there's so much work that needs to go off into that i've only scratched the surface i've written several books on it but i still only scratched the surface there's so much work uh then after the research is done there has to be think tanks there has to be more than what we have they got 1300 1400 think tanks we got three or four the odyssey project is one the harvest institute is another with dr claude anderson that man has put in work and hasn't gotten he's gotten a lot of exposure but not nearly the support he needs uh and for those expecting him to be perfect and have all the answers and that's not what this is about there is no such thing as perfection this thing is a journey it's about learning it's about being sold out for something you believe in it's about doing the best you can to present what you know at any given time it's about picking up the work of a guy like dr amos wilson a, a, a person like dr naeem Akbar, a person like dr claude anderson a person like neely fuller jr a person like dr francis chris wilson who is by the way the reason i even got into psychology uh, a person like Dr. Khaled Muhammad and sit up and say, okay, this is what they did. Let's take what they did. Let's look at it. Let's break it down. Let's expand it. Let's grow it. Let's, let's look at how we can impact it. It can't be something simply we are passing around memes and videos of, of the work of these great minds and not taking them and gleaning from them. the work of Franz Fanon in the 1950s. That stuff is unbelievably powerful. If you look at it, it's so much there. I've spent years examining and breaking that down and looking at the influences of colonialism versus slavery and seeing the dynamic connectivity in that and then say, seeing how we deal with it. But see, here's the thing. While we are not doing what we need to do, they are researching how it impacts us. They are researching different terms to use. Uh, the term black on black crime wasn't an accident. The term toxic masculinity isn't an accident. These are created to write certain narratives that they are able to sculpt and walk out and attack the very things they fear the most in us. And we have to be willing to understand it's up to us to create strong men. It was Frederick Douglass that said that uh, we either create strong children or we spend a lot of time healing broken men. And we're in that in that ladder right now because we haven't done what we needed to do to provide the right catalyst, the right insulation, the right information, the right structure for our young black boys. And it's hard to do when a great deal of developing young men is the modeling of manhood when there's 1.5 million men missing and 1.3 of those are in uh, prisons. And that's, again, is not an accident. That's a social construct as well. And you got to ask someone who makes up six or seven percent of the total population in the country. Black men are making up 40 percent of the population in prisons when uh, all of the studies in penology and criminology and sociology say that white men are more likely to commit crimes. But see, this is the difference when one one community is being policed, the other one is being protected and served. All of these things is, okay, it's good to talk about. It's good to sit up and, 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 and do interviews. It's good to do all that stuff. But if we don't get behind the programs that change the minds and the behaviors of the people who will be the difference makers, because see, what we're going to need is a generation of kids who don't have all of this toxic madness flowing into them that distracts them from their genius, distracts them from what they're capable of, distracts them from their responsibilities, gets them caught up in acceptance, gets them caught up in how many clicks, gets them caught up in how many lights. Everybody wants to be a creator and influencer. And I, I'm all for it. Create and influence something that grows people, expands people, moves beyond the superficial observation of your sexual ob objectification, male or female. And says, no matter what your physical appearance, here's your gift. And inside of that gift is your power. And that power facilitates your purpose. This is where we're missing it. 
So when I'm asking for support, I'm asking for support to advance something that should be bigger than anybody or any one person. This is 30 years of my life and I'm still going and I, 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 I will never quit because I can never disconnect from my blackness. I have no desire to disconnect from my blackness. I have nothing but love for my people. And it's not a co-signing of where we're at. It's not an acceptance of what we're seeing in ourselves. It's an acknowledgement of that. If you're not doing good, I'm not doing good. I refuse to be one of those people to say, I got mine, you get yours. I, I, I'm not built like that. I said this a long time ago, and I'm going to end up here. I said that as long as... The black men like myself who have been able to experience a certain level of success in this white racial caste system, as long as we remain an anomaly among our people, we have failed our people. And so this is the reason I fight so hard. This is the reason I push so hard. We're not going to win by clicking the like button alone. We're not going to win by clicking the subscribe button alone, nor the share button. All that's good. It gets the message out. We're going to have to support the work of the people who are willing to put it all out there. Because I'm telling you, it puts a target on your back. It, it, it shrinks the ability for you to connect and do things you want to do for you and yours. Because you become a threat. And you wonder why very few people want to do it. Number one is you become a, a, a target and then the very people you're fighting for aren't with you. So here's my, here's my challenge. I'm going to challenge everybody to support the work we're doing. The manner in which you can give is in the description box. There's three ways, two different links. Um, and you can give through the organization's Cash App account. And the Cash App handle is in the description box. But what I can tell you is our time is running out. The point in which we're going to become irrelevant as a race, as a group, as an enclave, as politically relevant, financially and economically relevant, is winding down. We are uh, rapidly being replaced by those south of the border. Um, and once we become irrelevant, um, if you think we've been through hardships in this country, just wait. The only way that we stop that is through the development of auto autonomous power. Power we've created where we're not asking them for jobs. We're creating our own. We're not begging them for resources. We're supplying our own. We're not asking them to fix our mental health issues. We're fixing them on our own. And that needs to be done in-house anyway because the Eurocentric idea of psychology isn't applicable to the Afrocentric or the African-American experience. And that's a whole nother thing, something that I've invested a great deal in. We've got to deal with the mental health issue. It can no longer be taboo. It, we're going to have to address it. There's an implosion taking place and it's expanding because we are pretending it doesn't exist. So again, I'm asking you, support the work we do. Click the link. It, it, the amount is appreciated, whether it's a dollar, a hundred dollars, or a thousand. But we need to have people engaged. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe. If you, if you haven't hit the like button, hit the like button. Share the video. Challenge a friend to give. Contact the office. The office, my information is in the description box. Reach out to me. Find out what's going on. Ask if you can help. If there's somebody that needs help that is in a precarious situation, connect us to them. We'll do whatever we can to the to the uh, extent of our resources, which isn't a lot. It's primarily me. I mean, literally. You know, I mean, literally, it's it's crazy. But it's up to us to do for us. So again, I'm challenging you. On that note, I'm about to get out of here. 
and you guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. And thank you in advance. For